and suddenly I thought of an email I received today, this morning, from New Zealand, from somebody who was initiated by a master many years ago and who was practicing his meditation with due diligence, got beautiful results in meditation, saw the radiant form of his master and was very happy and had other inner experiences. After all that beautiful experience, he ran into another video and a book by Baba Fakir Chand. Now Baba Fakir Chand is one of the saints who claimed that he would do nothing. In fact, his biography is published is called The Unknowing Saint. And he claimed that the masters know nothing. Everything you get is from within yourself. That the masters do not even project their radiant form in you. You project the radiant form yourself. And he gave an example, Baba Fakir Chan gave an example of his own life when he was in the military and so were some of his disciples. And there, one day, three of his disciples were suddenly surrounded by the enemy on all, all four sides and they knew they were going to be killed. So they sat together and prayed, Babaji, this is the time when we are going to be killed by the enemy. As a last resort, we want to pray to you. Please take care of us. Take us to such Sachkhand as soon as we die. Please help us. At that time, Babaji appeared, almost in a physical form, standing right in front of them. And he said, don't worry, you are not going to die today. Don't worry. There is behind this small tree, a, a little bush. Under the bush, there's a tunnel. If you go in the tunnel, you will go behind the enemy lines and just escape. Go and take the tunnel and come out, and I will see you. And then he disappeared. They marveled at the power of the master that he could do this. They looked behind, and under the bush, there was a tunnel. They went through the tunnel and escaped, and were not killed. They were so grateful to the master for sparing their life. They ran to him and said, Master, thank you very much for saving our life. He said, what happened? They said, you came and you told us about the tunnel and we came. He said, I know nothing about it. I was not there. I was myself very frightened of being killed myself. And what are you talking about? They said, Master, you yourself came to us. We saw you. All three of us saw you. And not only we saw you, you directed us to a tunnel nobody could have known. And you saved our life. And don't be so humble and pretend you don't know. He said, the truth is I don't know. That masters know nothing. Then he made general statements. That masters really come as projections of the self. And the whole secret is in the self. Whatever you will find, you will find within yourself. Even the radiant form of the master that you find is within yourself. And therefore, why masters appear outside is to generate the kind of faith that you can discover who you are and go within. Therefore, he said, I know nothing. Masters know nothing. And if a master says he is doing everything, he is no master. He made such dramatic statements which led to a lot of controversy. Do masters really have any power? Or are they mere shadows of the self? And they're just projecting themselves to take you inside, and the whole secret is inside. This question about Baba Fakir Chan, who people say was the only honest master, because he confessed that he knew nothing. All others claim that they have all the powers of a master. They, fear, they say he's the honest master. But then they question, what about all the other perfect living masters who initiated people and the people saw their radiant forms? And didn't they really see the radiant form of the master? Didn't the master have any hand in it? As it happens, I have met Baba Fakir Chal personally several times. He was our neighbor in Usharpur. My father was teaching there. He was a good friend of my father. And we met him several times. 
and we even discussed this incident with Baba Fakir Chand personally. So that I had some personal knowledge. And he explained why he said all those things. He said, the reason I say this is because when people begin to follow masters, they don't do any meditation. They think just following that person is good enough. And therefore, he overemphasized the fact that the truth lies within yourself. Even the master lies within yourself. After all, all this creation that we see outside is a projection from inside. If the whole creation is a projection from inside, surely a physical master is also a projection from inside. Which means the truth is that the perfect living master we talk about is inside us, not outside. But we cannot see him. If we close our eyes, we see darkness. Therefore, the projected master who appears outside functions exactly like the master inside. And yet at the same time, he's just a shadow of the master inside. He is not only a shadow, he is a very active shadow because by listening to him, by following what he says, by getting initiated by him, we find the true master within ourselves. Therefore, at all times, the true master is within us. He emphasized this point that he knew nothing just to make a point that don't follow human beings just blindly. Listen to what they say, follow what they are saying and you will find the truth inside, including the true master, because the radiant form of the master is the master who takes you back home, and that radiant form of the master is inside us, not outside. But he resembles the one outside so much that we can have a link. Why does he resemble so much? Because he is outside. He is the projected form outside. Therefore, it's very difficult to say which one should we follow, the outside or the inside? The fact is, we should follow the inside. Can we follow the inside without the outside? No way. Then it comes back to the same thing, that we have to follow a physical living master outside who can talk to us, who can teach us, who can answer our questions, who can guide us, who can tell us when we are wrong and when we are right on the path, who can tell us all the details of the journey we are going to have, who can encourage us to go within, who can time and again help us with means to go within. But after he has done all that, we find that the master who will be with us for all time and is permanent is inside us. And that's the radiant form of the master we find within ourselves. So there's a role for the master outside and there's a role for the master inside. And because it's a projection, actually it's the same. In fact, one Perfect Living Master has said, Bahar bhitar eko jano, yahi guru gyan bataya, which translated means, the inside and the outside are the same. That's what I learned from my Master. Do not think that the outside is separate and you run away from it. That there's a created world outside sitting objectively and we have to run away from it and go somewhere else inside. The outside projected world is also being projected from inside and the inside world that we see outside. But it looks so real outside. It has all the elements of external reality. It becomes physically real. Therefore, in the physical reality, which our mind accepts that the world outside is real, we have to search for something very abstract, something very unknown inside. Since we think like that, therefore, the outside world becomes the reality for us and we search for other realities inside without ever leaving the notion that the world outside and our physical body here is the only reality we know. And that is why, because we take the outside world as real, we have to take the outside master also as real. Though the outside master is projected from inside and is working exactly as the inside master is doing, there is no difference between the two.